So quiet here. You don't have to be so quiet. It's okay. Um, it's a little warmer in the sanctuary today, but the cool weather of this past week when it was here was lovely. And it reminds me of what is to come fall, winter, eventually, both as inevitable as the boulder rolling down the hill. The other sign for me of impending fall is the start of football. NFL preseason games have been going for, I think, three weeks now, three and a half weeks. And college football officially kicked off yesterday. You Delaware fans, they start on Thursday, so don't be caught off guard. This Thursday. I should just confess, if it didn't come up too much last fall, um, I should warn you, I am a huge college football fan. Um, I have plenty of concerns about sporting culture in America. You don't need to share them with me. I share them already. But still, we like things that are problematic sometimes, right? All of us do, or I assume. Maybe I'm projecting my own feelings onto you. Maybe you have never liked anything that you had deep concerns about. <laughs> a girlfriend, a boyfriend, <laughs> chocolate cake, whatever. <laughs> but to get back to the point, the signs that summer is coming to an end are everywhere. Some of the leaves on the trees on my street at home are turning already. Um, one of my kids was in Texas the last three weeks visiting family, and he came back and he noticed this instantly because, of course, everything was bright green when he left three weeks ago. And now our cherry trees are already turning a little bit yellow, the leaves are. Here in our congregation, we'll formally start our new church year on September 8th with our in-gathering service, including the water ceremony that we do each year to celebrate our joining together as a community for another year. And so summer, like so many things in our lives, is fleeting. Here one moment, gone the next. Even though a hot and muggy summer week can seem like it will never end, one day you look at the calendar and realize it's almost gone. There's some sadness in that, but there's also the joy that, for instance, your kids will start school again tomorrow. I don't know if they're joyful about that, but I am. <laughs> they seemed a little more mixed when I talked to them. And so the time of, the passage of time, rather, you know, we see the world as it is, uh, not as it is, rather, but as we perceive it to be. Uh, for me, generally, summer has always been a really happy time. Even growing up in Texas, I liked the weather. It can be hot, but I, I liked it. I have very fond memories of summer breaks from school, of time at home or off at summer camps or visiting some of our family up in the Texas Hill Country. I know those are not universal experiences, but perhaps you can plug in your own. It may have been a little bit different. Maybe you can connect with the idea of finding meaning in the changing of seasons and of having certain times of year that you view the most fondly, that you still look forward to, that will always have a special place in your heart. I think that whatever time of year that is for you, I'm going to use summer today. We have many summers in our life, times of recreation and reflection, perhaps, rest and recuperation. Times that we might go away on vacation or just a trip to seek out air conditioning wherever it might be found. Perhaps time to reflect on the year or years that have been and what might be to come. I spend a lot of my time reflecting like this, like taking time just to think when I can with as few distractions as, one you can man as, uh, as I can manage in our modern world. Though, of course, in this day and age, reflecting on white, what, what, excuse me, reflecting on what might be to come, well, that's kind of a loaded proposition. In this era in which we deal with rising fascism and pandemic and climate change and 
We could name a bunch of other existential problems, I'm sure. I was reminded of this quote uh, recently from Howard Zinn, which is some 30 years old, but it strikes me still as relevant as ever. This is from uh, his uh, semi-autobiographical, You Can't Be Neutral on a Moving Train. He writes, to be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many, where people have behaved magnificently this gives us the energy to act, and at least the possibility of sending the spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presence. And to live now as we think human beings should live, in defiance of all that is bad around us, is itself a marvelous victory. So ends his words. And so in this particular summer of my life, I'm thinking about what it means to hope, what it means to dream of better things than might seem possible. I've always been very partial to hope, the idea that one can dream of better things even when there isn't necessarily evidence to support that feeling. I think about my children and who they are becoming and who they will become. I'm now at age 43, so I'm somewhere near entering the second half of my life, or maybe already in it. And I think of what the first half of my life was like, having lived through the dawn of the internet age and the creation of social media and a hundred other things we could name. What on earth might happen in the next 43 years? which would take us to the year 2067, by the way, which makes my mind hurt a little just to say out loud. <laughs> 2067. And so as Zinn puts it, uh, this idea of dreaming is romantic in the very best sense of the word, to imagine a, an idealized view of reality. It's good for me to do that because I think in my life I'm pretty pragmatic for the most part. I think I understand how things work in our world. I know that not all the things I dream of are possible, certainly not in the, time, the length of time that I, I've been given. But the romance of summer doesn't require the impossible just for us to dream of the best that might be possible. Because the achievement of even our realistic goals, and I know that's not easy, of course it isn't, but even the achievement of our realistic goals would be amazing. The other thing about this fall, of course, is that it leads up to our next election. So politics are on my mind, and I know many of yours too. I've quoted it here before, but I will again. Politics was famously described as the art of the possible by Otto von Bismarck. I like to remind people that Otto von Bismarck first said that, apparently. Something that has been repeated many times over the years and the decades. The art of the possible. Now our last few years, maybe more than that in fact, have been difficult in many ways on that front because the possible has seemed to be heading backwards, to me at least. Things like the overturning of Roe v. Wade, a rollback in voting rights protections, little progress, if any, on international climate change efforts, racial justice very much in the, cross light, the crossroads, and again, we could name a hundred other things. So I say with concern all of those things, but even so, that concern shares space in my heart with the idea that it's not that hard for me to see a path forward to better things too. And I don't think that's Pollyanna-ish, I don't think it's hopelessly naive. 
We've done it before in this country. We've made progress. We can do it again. Now, of course, whatever dreams I have have to uh, be intertwined, have to be managed with the commitment that it takes to work for these things. Because otherwise, it is merely foolishly romantic to borrow from Zen. I'm excited, for instance, about the climate justice revival we'll be taking part in the end of this month on September 29th. If you haven't heard about that yet, don't worry, you'll hear a lot more in the, the weeks to come. Um, we're taking part in that with many, many other UU organizations. I'm excited, you already heard today a little bit about UU The Vote, which is a national effort of Unitarian Universalists working to ensure voting rights, working to increase voter turnout, and to push for certain issues that we're particularly concerned about. I wanna make note too that none of those issues are partisan, though many people might try to convince you otherwise. Certainly ensuring voter rights should not be, is not a partisan issue. And anyone who tries to make you think that it is, you should ask them why they don't want people to have their constitutionally protected right to vote. You could ask them too why they're concerned about, so concerned about fraudulent voting when all of the evidence shows us that it is practically non-existent, that it is a one in ten of mil, tens of millions that it happens at most. In any case, it's summer. I'm excited about these last few days of summer. I'm excited about the possibilities for our future. Whatever your summer was like, I hope that you can join me in the romance of dreaming, in the daring of hope. Join me in the notion, perhaps, that our small efforts can achieve something great if we aspire and work towards it. Summer is coming to an end, but our dreams are very much alive and the work to make them true continues. May it be so.